So it looks like there's more to this Jonathan Major and Megan Good relationship than we could have ever imagined. And it's all thanks to Cat Williams. I swear Cat Williams has been wing out ever since he went on Club Shay in January of this year. And it looks like he's still going at it in his Club Shay interview. Cat got all up in Jonathan Major's business, throwing shade on him for his divvy case against his ex Grace Jabari. Well, Cat recently took things a step further by accusing Jonathan of allegedly cheating on Grace with his new booth bang. Megan, good Cat also claimed that the DB case was all because of Megan y'all. It looks like Cat Williams might seem to have his sights set on Jonathan next, and this situation is already very messy, Megan. Good's love life has been a trending topic on social media ever since her divorce from Devin Franklin in 2022. Their divorce was a shocker because we all thought they had a strong, solid relationship. But it turns out that wasn't the case. Unlike most celebrity marriages, the divorce wasn't toxic and was pretty straightforward. They even put up a united front when they made the announcement, posting a statement on Instagram that said, After much prayer and consideration, we have decided to go into our future separately, but forever connected. We celebrate almost a decade of marriage together in a love that is eternal, there's no one at fault. We believe this is the next best chapter in the evolution of our love. We are incredibly grateful for the life-changing years we've spent together as husband and wife. They had us all playing detective for weeks trying to crack the case of their marriage meltdown and seriously, we all thought that they were in-game. The conspiracy theories were wild. Some folks said they were cheating. Others claimed that the marriage was sham. And there were even whispers that Devin was secretly gay. Social media was on fire and I mean every word of that. But despite the drama that kept things classy online, no messy accusations, no finger pointing, just a lot of unanswered questions. And one thing that seemed pretty clear though was that Devin felt guilty about the whole thing. And when I say guilty, I don't mean sad, because there's definitely a difference a few days after they announced the divorce. He posted a picture of him crying on Instagram and captioned it I took this picture a few months ago I'm not much of a crier so in a moment of deep pain and peace, I took this picture. It captures best how I feel I share this with you because it is the most honest way to start this year. I know we are starting a new year yet I don't wish you a happy new year. I wish you a happy true year. Megan on the other hand made posts like 2021 you bring me the highest life changing affirming highs and the lowest g-ring soul breaking lows. Although I'm grieving I'm also in glorious awe and thankfulness to you God they say all endings are also beginnings and healing isn't pretty but the other side is freaking beautiful so yeah. It was like they were on two different pages in the same book of peace which left us all scratching our heads and wondering how things went so wrong to divorce it didn't take long for fans to put two and two together though there were speculations running wild about how the marriage crashed and Dion basically forced Megan to change so much that she lost herself it sounds wild but it actually makes total sense now. For those who don't know Megan and Devin met on the set of the movie Jumping the Broom and they hit it off instantly. But there was one little problem. Dion was a pastor while Megan was spiritual, and many people felt like she wasn't on the same spiritual wavelength as Devin. But hey love conquers all right. Well I guess not exactly, but as they say love alone isn't always enough it takes a ton of compromise in this relationship. Most of that compromise fell on Megan's shoulders as she had to make significant changes to fit Devin's vision of a preacher's wife for example Devin was celibate before they got together so Megan had to adopt to celibacy too even though it wasn't really her thing before Donan. And that's just the start Megan's career took a bit of a turn too, as the preacher speaker's wife. She had to be more cautious and choosy about the role she took on. Even while they were married, fans speculated that her career took a hit because of her relationship and marriage to Devon. So there was this whole lot of adjusting and reshaping going on in their relationship, especially on Megan's part. Despite her efforts to mold herself into what Devon wanted, it was never quite enough to make matters worse. She faced severe bullying and harassment from members of the church and when I say bullying I don't mean that she was dealing with with a few mean comments here. And there Megan was subjected to full-blown harassment and mistreatment because some church members didn't see her as a worthy of being Devin's wife. The situation became so unbearable that she eventually stopped attending church altogether to escape this relentless negativity. When Devon and I got married, I no longer was receiving criticism from just people in the world. I was receiving criticism from people who were Christians. It was almost kind of like brutal as I was getting um, on my character, um, on my husband, on different things. So I wasn't ready for that. And I think the first maybe two and a half years I was married. Megan had a deep spiritual and genuine love for God and the church. But unfortunately, she didn't receive the same love and return from much church members. Despite facing public and private criticism, she couldn't retaliate or defend herself publicly. Because of her role as a preacher speaker's wife, it was a tough spot for her navigating the harsh judgment and negativity from both sides. 
and y'all I don't envy her at all because she had a really tough time for not one, but not two nine whole years. I was at um, the grocery store, and I looked at a newsstand, and I saw you, and you had your breast show. Okay. You understand? Okay, so we gonna cover up, right? We gonna cover Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, 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 no. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No. That ain't that ain't, no. That is not what we're here for. She's not gonna cover up. She's gonna wear what she wanna wear. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 She's gonna wear what she wants to wear. Talk about the audacity, y'all. I mean, if that woman had a genuine concern, she could have approached Megan privately. Maybe even at like a grocery store, or write her a letter instead of publicly humiliating her like that. Even then it would have been rude, but not as damaging as what actually went down. The statement clearly hit Megan hard, reinforcing why she never felt truly welcomed in the church. And if someone is willing to shame her like that in public, who knows what happens behind closed doors? It's insane that after all the changes Megan went through at Devon's urging, she still faced bullying from the very people who should have embraced her, but to Devon's credit, he did try to defend her at times, but it wasn't enough. There were moments when he wasn't around or couldn't speak up and leaving Megan to endure these insults by herself. So not only was she dealing with all of that, but all the challenges of adapting to this new identity shaped by her husband. And then, there's the issue of them not having children. Megan had always been clear that she didn't want kids. But sources from Devon's church kept poking and prodding and questioning why she hadn't started a family. And y'all better believe that they were not asking from a place of genuine concern or because they cared about her. Well, after the divorce, I'm not going to lie, Megan completely switched it up and became the total baddie again, and fans started to talk about how she was probably caged in the marriage because she did a complete 180 -0. And y'all know how Megan always said that she didn't want kids while she was married to Devin. Well, it looks like Devin was the one who didn't want kids and she went along with it speaking to Romper in early 2020 when she said, When you say you're not sure you want to be a mom, people look at you like, You're a bad person, as if something's wrong with you. But I was never really that girl who said I can't wait to get married, or I can't wait to be a mother. I just was very much a tomboy. And I started my career so young that I had always been very business-oriented. But the moment the divorce was finalized, Megan suddenly started talking about how she couldn't wait to have kids. What do you want next? What is next for Megan Good in life? I want to travel. I want to direct more. I want to do more action. I want to create vehicles for little black girls to show themselves in completely different lights and help support that and uplift that. I want... No, I, I, I want to find my like right house that I'm excited about and um, maybe have a kid. But that wasn't the only radical change she had because her style changed completely. But the biggest change happened when she started dating Jonathan Majors. Fans had been interested in Megan's love life since she got divorced from Devon. But after we found out that she was with Jonathan Majors, the internet went wild and fans lost their minds over this. See if Jonathan and Megan had gone public with their romance two weeks before they did fans would have eaten it all up and called them couple goss. But unfortunately, they went public right in the middle of Jonathan's trial for DB and it was a hot mess Megan. Got dragged for filth over it and fans accused Jonathan and his team of using Megan a black woman to clean up the mess that he found himself with that. Was caused by a white woman, his ex Grace Jabari. According to TMZ, Jonathan and Grace were in a taxi on their way home from a Brooklyn bar when she noticed that he was getting texts from another woman. And this led to an argument in the back of a taxi. TMZ reported this got Major mad that he allegedly grabbed her hand and allegedly slapped her. We're also told the alleged Vic claims he put his hands around her neck during this. Our sources tell us the alleged head visible in including a laceration behind her ear redness and marks on her face. She was taken to an area hospital and is in stable condition, and according to the police sources Majors called 911 himself to report his concern about his girlfriend with whom he lives when police arrived sources say the girlfriend told a different story that she and Majors were in a cab on the way home from Brooklyn when he physically attacked patrol officers noticed marks on the woman's body.